is on the bench, deliberation becomes a way of life. I hear it tell that once it took the judge two weeks of deliberation to decide as to whether or not to deny or sustain an objection. That's a lie. It took less than ten days. By the time he'd made his decision, I'd forgotten what it was I objected about. <laughs> well, in that case, I think I'd better sit down. Heath, that's an apocryphal story. However, I always do try to see every side of a thing before rendering a decision. <laughs> Jared, would you uh, lend me a dollar, please? Thank you, gentlemen, for a most stimulating and rewarding evening. Thank you, Victoria, for being so lovely and such a good cook. Flattery, Adam, will only get you another invitation for dinner. Next week. Any evening these boys feel like another game of fool, who would have thought that beneath those judicial robes lies the heart of a thief? Ah, uh, Jared, if this ever gets out, my judicial reputation is ruined. <laughs> Mr. Barclay? No, Please, get the doctor. Well, let's get him over the couch. Thank you. Very kind. Mr. Barclay? That's right. Mr. Barclay? My name is Polino Arieta. I have just escaped from the Pinewood Jail, where I was held as a murderer. I wish you to be my lawyer. Well, I wish you'd ask me that before you escaped. I didn't think I had a chance in the court, so I ran away. But I am innocent. Now I wish to stand and fight them. I remember how you saved my, my cousin Arturo. I think you must be the man to save me also. Do you accept? I will see about that as soon as we take care of this wound. One more thing. I am a Basque. In Pinewood, they call some of us Basques murderers and traitors and foreigners. I am an anarchist. a lot of blood, but he's a strong boy. Doc said he'd be fine after a couple of days' rest. Fine, eh? For hanging? He should have kept running until he was out of the state or across the border. Why, Your Honor, that doesn't sound very much like you. I'll chalk it up to its being way past an old man's bedtime. Anyway, we're not just judge and lawyer here. We're two old and very good friends. And as a friend, Jared, I hope you haven't decided to represent him. Why not? You're going to be on the bench, aren't you? That's besides the point. I'm a county judge, Jared. I'll have to preside unless I get lucky and fall deathly ill, get run over by a team of wild horses. <laughs> Jared, when you defended that Basque two years ago, it was an unpopular cause. And he was only accused of petty theft. Well, a lot's happened since then. I don't have to tell you those people up around Pinewood have been scared witless by this anarchist philosophy. Oh, that's a lot of nonsense, Adam. 
Well, the entire Basque community is only represented by a small minority, and probably only a few of them are anarchists. There's nothing rational about fear. And there's no atmosphere less conducive to holding a fair trial. Win or lose, you're going to make more enemies than any man needs in a whole lifetime. And get paid off for your labor in a bottle of Basque wine. Ah, a dozen bottles of good Basque wine and a sheepskin coat. Now, that's what that Basque paid me two years ago to defend him. And besides, Adam, the boy might be innocent. He's an admitted anarchist. He believes in violent overthrow of government. Object. Therefore, he believes in personal violence, since governments are composed of people. Your Honor, I object. Sustained. Cigar. No, thank you. After all, we're not trying the boy for a philosophy, are we, but for an overt action. Ideas can't kill people, only people can. And I better stop that. We'll probably be arguing this in court, won't we? Yes, we will. And to think it was my intention to try to talk you out of taking the case. Well, next time I'll know better. I'll keep my big fat mouth shut, take my three dollars and go straight home. Well, if it's any consolation to you, Adam, I decided to take the case before I came downstairs. Now, where did Victoria put my hat? And do you know why? Hmm? Because I know that no matter how unpopular the case, I can present my client before a judge that is fair and just, no matter what the atmosphere. Who do you want? You just can't come barging in here. You have no right. Oh, I got the right. I think you take a look upstairs. You better hold on. You can't go up those steps. Shut up. You on the stairs. I believe you heard the gentleman. Okay, Vic, hold it a second. My name's Walt Baker. I'm Sheriff of Pinewood Way. I believe we met once before, Mr. Barclay. What are you waiting for? Hold it right there. You do have a warrant, Sheriff. Now look, Mr. Barclay, I'm chasing an escaped murderer, and I have every reason to believe that he's holed up right here. Well, he's upstairs in one of the bedrooms, Sheriff. Why didn't you just ask? Well, I just thought that I knew we hit him. There was some blood. I'll take him off your hands now, Mr. Barclay. He's in no condition to be moved. He busted out of my jail, and I'm taking him back with me. One way or another, he goes back with me tonight. And if he dies along the way, chalk it up, it'll save the state expenses for the trial. Now step aside, Mr. Barclay. Yes, Sheriff. You take him. We're ill-equipped to stop you. But mark this. If he does die en route back to your jail, or even if he makes it safely and then some accident befalls him, you, Sheriff, you and your deputy will stand trial in my court for murder. Well, Judge, I didn't know that you were here. Okay, Vic, the judge is here. You will take full responsibility for the prisoner. Is that right, Your Honor? That's right. Mr. Barkley. Many thanks, Adam. Yes, Jared. It's beginning to shape up, even now, as quite a trial. I thought we'd already said goodbye. Heath and I have uh, been doing some thinking. Yeah, I know what you've been thinking about. He's already told me. Now, it's not that I don't appreciate the offer of the company. Now, you're going to run into just a little bit more in trouble up there in Pinewood. Oh, I don't think so. I think the judge straightened that out pretty well with the sheriff. The sheriff is one man. From what I understand, the feelings are running pretty high against the Basques in that town. Uh, I'll bet you turn out to be nothing more than a routine lawyer's job. Now, there's nothing routine lawyer's job about this. Now, look, Nick. It's been a long time since you've asked me to mend a fence or chase a stray, right? This is a little bit different. Just give us your best wishes. We can use all of those we can get, right, Polino? No, I'm not worried. I'm innocent. Besides, I have the best lawyer in the world. So long, Nick. Get up there. Basque. This man is in my custody. I'm delivering him to your sheriff. Oh, we'll take care of that for you, mister. Take him. 
Let him go. What's going on? Just in the nick of time, huh, Sheriff? I don't think so, Counselor. Good folks were just making sure that the prisoner was headed in the right direction. I'll take him off your hands now, Barkley. All right, break it up. Go on about your business. You staying around a piece, mister? That's right. Good. It'll give us a chance to get better acquainted. Maybe find out what kind of man would defend him. Go on now, Russ. Move it along. You got to understand, Russ, Mr. Barkley. He didn't have any more against them Baskar anarchists than the rest of us did. Till your boy there killed his brother, Bill Miller. I never killed Danny Miller. How could I? I spent the whole day with my friend Julio up in the hills. He'll swear to that. I'll prove it to you. Well, you know, we don't have to prove it to him. We'll prove it in court. Now, I'm going to have to leave for a little while. You'll be safe here. I think the sheriff will see to that. Oh, Mr. Barkley. When you see my friend, will you have him bring my dog? He'll be lost without me. Like that, one way or another, he's bound to get hurt. You'd asked me that before you tried to kill me. I thought you were from the town. We Basques have had much trouble here. They have threatened to run us off our land, even to kill us. Well, I'm Jared Barkley, Paulino Arietta's lawyer. The acres of Athens and to think I almost killed you. Paulino, where is he? I dropped him off in town. He's going to stand trial. That was a mistake. They will kill him here. I don't think so. Paulino does not stand a chance in your courts. I think he stands a better chance fighting for justice in our courts than you people stand fighting the townspeople with your guns. Besides, we've got an eyewitness to testify for us. Yes, Julio. Now, he's the one I want to talk to. Of course. Follow me. Sister, you bring an honored guest. Welcome to our village, Mr. Barkley. It's my honor, senor. See that Mr. Barkley's horse is watered and fed. Quickly. Please, Mr. Barkley. Rosa, some coffee and some of our delicious Basque bread. Mr. Barkley, we have heard rumors that you are going to defend Paulino. This is true. This is true. Wonderful, wonderful. With Gerard Barkley to defend him, our poor Paulino may yet have some small hope for justice. I was in court when you defended Arturo. A masterful job. Thank you, sir. But, of course, things have changed since then. Animosity has grown. The town has declared war on us. Seems to me you've kind of declared war on them, too. I was almost one of your casualties. I thought he was from the town. Terrible thing, war. Innocence caught in a crossfire. But, naturally, we just defend ourselves. Naturally. But as Polino's lawyer and a friend of your people, I must insist that you refrain from any more acts of provocation. But of course, we are the provoked, never the provocateurs. 
Well, that's reassuring. Although I've heard that there are those among you who preach violence, even anarchy. There are those amongst us who believe that law is evil when it operates only for the protection of the privileged. And it is the privileged who operate the law. You know, if you really believe that, you must either think I'm a dishonest man or a fool for having come here. <laughs> I am telling you what the anarchists believe. Maybe you can free Paulino and prove them wrong. I can try. He wants to speak with Julio. Naturally. And what Mr. Berkeley wants, Mr. Berkeley shall have. Julio! You will be honored to meet Paulino's lawyer, Senor Gerald Berkeley. Hello. Paulino tells me you were with him on the day of the murder. Is that true? Yes. That day. I think it was that day. I am a shepherd, senor. Paulino and I, we spend many days together in the hills. One day is like another. Is there some question in your mind about that particular day? I will help my friend Paulino in any way I can. You can help him most by simply telling the truth. I will do what I can do. You're a witness in this case, an eyewitness. I have told you, I will speak for Paulino. It would help him more if you would speak to me first. Now, Julio, you must understand that your friend's life may be in your hands. I need to go over your testimony very carefully. I have left my flock unattended. I must go to them. Tomorrow. Yes, you will come again tomorrow. And now, if there is nothing more... There is one thing. Paulino's dog. He asks that you bring it to him at the jail. Yes. I will try. Tomorrow. He's only a boy, very young. He's sick about his friend Paulino. You understand. Well. Thank you for the coffee and bread. Our pleasure, Senor Barclay. Rosa, take Senor Barclay to his horse. Anything we can do for you and Paulino, you will please call on us. I'll do that. Hello, Don Bernardo. How are you? Huh? <laughs> Filthy sheep dog. Now, I'm a fair minded man, but mark my words, if he yaps too much, out he goes. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. You see, he's an ordinary dog. He's a nobleman. <laughs> Julio, how is everything? Fine. And the wife? She's well. My flock. In good hands. Good. Thank you.
Cut yourself shaving, Counselor? I'd like to see my client, Sheriff. Your gun, Mr. Sparkly. What happened? That'll be all, Sheriff. Sure you don't want to lodge a complaint? Well, there's nothing to complain about. You were right. I cut myself shaving. They did this to you. When did it happen? How? How many were there? Oh, maybe a half dozen. It was Miller's brother, Russ, huh? He was one of them. I couldn't see their faces. They wore hoods. But he wasn't one of them. They're all cowards. Towns people, they're all cowards. All cowards wear hoods. They were Basques, Polino. What? Basques. Oh, you're wrong. I couldn't believe it myself. But the one who whipped me, the one who seemed to be their leader, the way he stood, the way he moved, he reminded me unmistakably of Francisco. Oh, you're lying. They wore rope soled shoes, just like you. Well, that proves nothing. Why, the townspeople, that would have been a very clever trick to wear rope soled shoes. There was a sheepdog there. How many of the townspeople have sheepdogs? But you were beaten out of your mind. Why, your eyes, your mind were playing tricks on you. Oh, is this some kind of a trick you're playing on me? I wish it were. Why? Why, is it possible? My friends? People I love them and live with them? Is it possible they're going to turn against me? Why? I've asked myself that same question. Now, the townspeople, they'd like to take you out and string you up right now, wouldn't they? Yes, they made that clear, sir. But your friends, they want you to stand trial. Well, of course they do, because I'm innocent. Because they want you to be found guilty. What are you trying to say? To be found guilty and hanged, thereby proving that all foreigners get no justice in America, that they should become anarchists and fight to overthrow the government and its laws. You stop that, I warn you. They're using you, Paulino, and they'll continue to use you. Only I scared them. Scared them that I might get you free and rob them of their martyr. Get out! You're no longer my lawyer. All right, Paulino. I can get out. Then you'll have accomplished what they failed to do last night, get rid of me. Send you to court with no defense, another black eye for American justice. Now believe me, Polino, I want to be your friend and your lawyer, because I honestly believe I can get you free. What do you say? All right. Barclay, if what you say is true, then how come Julio comes here as my friend to bring my dog, to bring me hope? If what you say is true, if my own people want to see me hang, then how come Julio comes here to testify for me? You answer me that! animals in town. They will stop at nothing. Please sit down. Coffee for Senor Barkley. I was hopeful violence could be avoided. I want to talk to Julio. Julio is gone. Sold his flock, left his house behind. I see. Terrible. Terrible thing for Julio to do. With Paulino, you, all of us, counted on Julio's testimony. But I can understand his fear. What was he afraid of? What we are all afraid of, of being murdered. And Julio in particular, he has heard their threats. We have all heard what they will do to Julio if he testifies. Who made those threats? Come now, senor. The town, the good people of Pinewood. The same good people who drag you from your bed, beat you. 
What are you going to do now, Mr. Barclay? Julio, our eyewitness, our one chance of freeing Paulino, gone. Julio may be gone, but not our chance to free Paulino. Come now, senor. We both know that without an eyewitness, Paulino stands no chance. Little enough chance in your court with an eyewitness. How long have you lived in this country, Francisco? What has that to do with anything? I was just wondering how long it took you to learn to hate us, so... Or did you hate before you came here? Hate? Ah, far from it. I came here with heart full of hope. You see, Mr. Barclay, I believed all your lies. The land of the free, the home of the brave. We welcome you with open arms. We welcome you. You, you stinking, dirty Basque. Welcome you, so long as you stay in your own little backyard. No, senor. I didn't hate when I came here, but I learned. The good people in Pinewood are excellent teachers. If Paulino were convicted and hanged, you'd gain recruits, wouldn't you? Well, don't count on his being a martyr for your cause. Admit it. You cannot win without Julio's testimony. It would have made it easier. But you see, I don't have to prove Paulino innocent. The state of California has to prove him guilty beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt. I hope you'll attend the trial, Francisco. You may learn something. Seat, ma'am. Courthouse burnt down last July and never did get it rebuilt. Thank you. Hold it. Any complaints? It is your country. I did not expect to be treated as an equal. Jared. Mother, what are you doing here? I came to watch the trial. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> Believe me, I can use all the moral support I can get. Yes, I can see that. Oh, oh yes, well, don't pay any attention to that. It may give me a little sympathy with the jury. Just sit down right there. Now, you say that this friend of yours came running into this very bar. I was standing right over there. I was having a few drinks, and Pete came running in, and he said... Objection, hearsay. He said that dirty Basque anarchist gunned down my brother Bill in cold blood. Let the record show that dirty Basque anarchist refers to the defendant. Your Honor, I object to any portion of this hearsay testimony being admitted to the record. Let's see where it's going, and then I'll rule on it. In my opinion, Your Honor, the jury has heard more than enough already. Any more questions for this witness? Yes. When Pete Hawkins came running into this bar, did he say that he had actually seen the defendant shoot your brother? He's seen that Basque fire them shots clear as I'm seeing you. He's a liar. Order. Objection. If I have to warn your client again, Counselor, he'll be charged with contempt. And I insist, Your Honor, that you make a ruling on this hearsay testimony before it becomes indelibly engraved in the minds of the jury. You'll have ample opportunity to cross-examine Mr. Miller on his testimony. Mr. Miller's testimony, Your Honor, is what's at issue here. He's testifying to what a third party claims he saw. If indeed there is a Pete Hawkins at all. Well, everybody in town knows Pete Hawkins. Well, now, that's most reassuring. I'd like to meet the gentleman myself, right here in the witness box, where he can be duly cross-examined. Well, uh... He got himself a good job up San Francisco way. He said he'd try to get down here for the trial, but if he couldn't, uh, I could tell what he saw almost as good as he could. <laughs> Order! Your Honor. Counselor. Come in. 
Hello, Mother. How was dinner? Very nice. No, as a matter of fact, I don't even remember what I ordered. Adam hardly touched a bite, and you know how he likes food. He's very disturbed, John. Yes, I could imagine he Actually, would be. he couldn't or wouldn't talk about the trial, but I think we well, ought Well, I don't think we should discuss it. I think we have to. You know, there were times in court today when you sounded as though... when you looked as though you hated him. Well, it's... It's been an emotional trial. No, 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 it's beyond that. All right, if you insist. Beyond that, I believe that our esteemed friend, Adam Cross, is doing everything in his power to hang an innocent man. I don't think you really believe that. He's making it awfully difficult for me to believe anything else. Jared, I was proud that you had the courage to defend Paulino, knowing he was an anarchist, knowing that he stood for everything you opposed. Mother, I am simply a lawyer defending a man on a specific charge of murder. Now, if it takes courage to do a thing like that, then there is something terribly wrong. All right, then there is something terribly wrong. But be careful how you fight it. Make Adam your friend, not your enemy. Make Adam my friend. Will you for one minute forget what he means to us? And try to remember the man that sat on that bench this afternoon, a frightened man. That's not true. I've known Adam for over 30 years. I've seen him face down a pack of killers. He's not afraid of the people in Pinewood. Oh, no, no. He's not afraid of the people in Pinewood. He's afraid of an idea, a word, anarchist. Now, believe me, that's an idea that frightens me, too. But this is no way to fight it. And I can only hope that Adam sees that before he makes Polino a martyr for a cause we all reject. No, no, you are wrong about Adam. You're judging him. And you're being as bigoted and narrow-minded as the people you condemn. Well, that may be. But the next time you see Adam, tell him this for me. That the sworn enemies of law are fear, ignorance, and violence. And we who serve the law must fight these specters wherever they raise their brutish heads. You won't have to remember it verbatim. Chances are Adam will. He wrote it. to set fire to the jail. Now, let me give fair warning, once and for all. Anyone caught committing such acts will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Now then, defense counsel has asked for a ruling concerning that portion of Mr. Miller's testimony as related to Peter Hawkins. The court rules that portion of the testimony is hearsay and should be stricken from the record. The jury will disregard it. How do you disregard something that is already in your mind, Mr. Barclay? Now, you say that on the afternoon of September 4th, you were nowhere near the ranch of the deceased William Miller. Is that correct? That's right. I was up in the hills with my sheep. Well, that's at least 10 miles away from where Mr. Miller was killed. And yet you heard Mr. Miller's brother state that there was a so-called eyewitness and Mr. Peter Hawkins, who saw you commit the crime. What do you say to that? I say that if this eyewitness was right here, I would call him... Object. Counsel is examining on the basis of hearsay testimony already stricken from the record. Stricken from the record, but not before it was heard in this court. Objection sustained. Loud and clear by every member of the jury. I'd like my client to respond to that testimony. I've already And then ruled. his honor can have both the testimony and the rebuttal stricken from the record. I ask your next question, Counselor. Now, you say that you spent that entire day with your sheep. Is that correct? Yes, sir. From sunrise to sunset. Well, then, I take it that you're calling this so-called eyewitness, this Mr. Hawkins, a liar. I swear by everything I have holy that this man is a liar, yes. And I further plead, gentlemen, that the district attorney obtain a subpoena and force this Mr. Hawkins to come to this court and testify so that my client may face his accuser. I am just so doing, there might be several interesting questions that I could ask, such as, just where was this Mr. Hawkins hiding when he supposedly saw Polino fire the fatal shots? Or, 
Why didn't he try to prevent the murder of his friend? Or, failing that, I object strenuously to counsel's clever tricks. He's trying to make the jury think that somebody else killed Miller. Objection sustained. We've already ruled that Mr. Miller's testimony is to be disregarded as hearsay. Now, let me warn you, don't bring it up again. I beg the court's pardon. Senior Arietta, are you an anarchist? Objection. The defendant's politics are not on trial. Either. Politics? I thought we were talking about a club that condones murder as a means to an end. The state of California is not going to take Polino Arietta's life just because his politics happen to be repugnant. Unless, of course, the state of California has rescinded the Bill of Rights. I will sustain the objection. The district attorney will rephrase his question. Well, now, let me say, uh, we can't talk about uh, Senior Arietta's politics, and um, we can't talk about what an eyewitness to the murder said, because, because that's hearsay. It, um, <laughs> makes it makes it kind of difficult to uh, get at the truth. Now, me, if, if the defense uh, could produce an eyewitness to testify as to the innocence of Senior Arietta, well, I'd be pleased as punch to hear all about it. <laughs> no, sir, you get no objection from the state. Now, as a matter of fact, I, I think I remember you, you had just such a witness, counsel, the uh, name of um, oh, oh, Julio de Aguirre. Your Honor, this is totally irrelevant. Senior Arietta, do you believe in the violent overthrow of this government? Objection. Objection overruled. Let's see where he's heading before jumping him. Answer the question. Paulino, you don't have to answer that question. Mr. Buckley, I'd like to answer this question, if you don't mind. No, sir, I don't believe in violence. Except when the laws are bad. When they don't protect the common man. Then you just take the law into your own hands, right? Well, if this is the only way by which I can win justice, yes. Did you believe the law of Pinewood was protecting you and the other Basque sheep herders from the cattlemen? No, I... I believe that the law here is on the side of the cattlemen. Bill Miller was a cattleman, wasn't he? Well, I was told so. I didn't know him. That's enough reason to hate him. Objection. It's enough reason for an anarchist to kill him. Objection, Your Honor. I did not kill him. I didn't even know him. But they threatened us. They said that they would run us off the hills. They threatened to kill our sheep. The law was too slow for you. Hmm? Objection, Your Honor. That's a conclusion. So you just took the law right into your own hands. You took a gun into your own hands, and then you went hunting for Bill Miller. Objection. He's leaving the witness. He came out of his house. He mounted his horse. You shot him in the back. Objection. You killed him the way you'd kill a fly. Without remorse and without guilt. Because you have been poisoned. Poisoned in your heart and soul by a foreign political philosophy. Objection, Your Poison, Honor. So you can no longer reason right Your Honor, I object to Poison, this. Poison, so you are now like question. a jungle animal. A wild animal who kills anything that gets in his way. That's all I've got to say. Your Honor, I stated a number of objections which the bench did not reply to. I take it that they were denied. You take it very well, Counselor. I move for a mistrial. Denied. I request permission to approach the bench and lay foundation. You're in contempt. And you, sir, have lost control of this court by a series of judicial errors which have denied my clients so much as a semblance of due process. This court is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I request to see his honor in his chambers. I will see defense counsel in this courtroom tomorrow morning, at which time I will rule on his motion. I would be impressed by your performance, Mr. Barclay. If we both didn't know that all your sound and fury signifies nothing, and that the wheels of your justice were long ago oiled to grind Paulino into the dust. Who is it? Victoria Barclay, may I come in? Sit down, please. 
I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, no, not at all. Can I, can I get you something? Coffee, some brandy or something? No, See, not a thing. There are certain advantages to having my chambers in the saloon. Thank you. Adam, last night Jared and I had words. Victoria, if this has any bearing on you the case... You know what he feels you're doing. Oh, yes. He's made that quite clear. Is he wrong? Victoria... You know I can't talk about the case. Forget the case. This is between two very old and very good friends. Now, last night, Jared said some things I couldn't, I wouldn't believe. But today in court, he... Well, you tell me. You tell me, and I'll walk out of here and never question you about this again. Is Jared wrong? Victoria, please. Is it's he very... wrong? Is he... It's a most complex case, Victoria. It's like an iceberg. 90% of the issues are... Jared says there's only one issue. Is Paulina guilty or innocent? He says you're frightened of what Paulina represents, and so I ask you once again, is Jared wrong? I'd like to see him. I'm going back to the hotel. I'll tell him. Ain't that their witness? I didn't ask you here to give you an explanation. There's no excuse for what I've done. You were right. I was frightened. And frightened men don't think very clearly. The simple truth is that I wanted Paulino Arietta to be guilty. And that's a judgment no judge may make. I'm declaring a mistrial. I wish you wouldn't do that, Adam. Jared, there's no way of reversing my judicial errors. I could lecture the jury from here to eternity, but I've let bias be planted in their minds, and there's no rooting it out at this 11th hour. It'll be vindicated in a new trial. There's no question about that. The state has no case. I can say that now. I won't be sitting at the new trial. He may be vindicated at a new trial. Unless the situation grows worse. In which case, Adam, he may not live long enough to stand for a new trial. And in the meantime, he sits in a hostile jail. Oh, uh, unless it's very important... It's important, Judge, very important. Come in, Julio. Mr. Buckley. What brought you back? If I could have a, a little glass of whiskey. Huh? Francisco told me Paulino was doomed. With or without my testimony, he ordered me to run. He said in this way I could best serve our cause. And Cisco was wrong. Was he not, Mr. Buckley? He was wrong. Paulino is innocent. He was with me the day Miller was killed. If I testify to this, Paulino will be freed, will he not? To justice. to escape, busted me over the head. I yelled for him to stop, but, but it was like he was plumb loco. Never stood a chance with two of my men with rifles there. He never stood a chance. Well, I wouldn't feel too bad about it, Sheriff. The Basque is dead. Pinewood is saved for the future. 
And I wouldn't worry for a second, Sheriff, that you might have killed an innocent man. We ain't never gonna know that for sure now. He's still alive. Paulino! He lives! He lives! Some of you men help me get him over to my office. Come on. What's the matter, Sheriff? Afraid he may live to tell the truth? He don't mean nothing to me. I was just doing my job. He tried to escape. You saw Julio come into town, didn't you? The bass boy? Sure, we seen him. His testimony might have cleared Paulino. You think the court would take the word of a stinking Basque? Shut up, Russ. Well, he's trying to make it out that we shot Arietta because we were scared he might get proved innocent. He tried to escape. In broad daylight? With his arm in a sling? Knowing the street was full of guns with fingers just itching to pull the trigger and kill him? No. No, you can't prove that. I say he tried to escape. Nobody can prove different. Well, that remains to be seen. There'll be a hearing, Sheriff. In the meantime, I'll just take your badge. I'll appoint an interim sheriff and deputy. Alive and a free man, Sheriff. Paulino Arietta would be living proof that our American justice makes us much stronger than any alien philosophy. If he dies, you will not only have murdered an innocent man, but created a martyr for the anarchists. I wonder if men like you can really understand that. Finish your work and get some sleep. Here's a gentleman to see you. It is late. I hope I am not disturbing you. Oh, that's all right. Thank you, Silas. I will say what I must say and say it quickly. From the Basque community to our respected and honored friend, Counselor Gerald Barclay. Well, I, uh, I thank you. Paulino wanted to come and present these personally, but the half dozen bullet wounds. It will take even a Basque a few more days to fully recover. I, uh, I trust that those sheepskins are full of good Basque wine. That will wait on the tasting. Uh, well, at any rate, it's, it's more than I expected. I told my people to wait on this until the hearing was over. I told them that perhaps it was just another trick for the benefit of the gullible Basques, that you weren't really serious about trying the sheriff and the others. My people feel you have done enough already. And what do you think, Francisco? I admit, I was surprised when you had that man Hawkins up in San Francisco indicted as Miller's murderer. Did you really think that we'd just disregard his confession? I don't know what I thought. I admit it, Mr. Barclay. You confused me from the first, taking on the case, staying with it even after we... after we beat you. Well, that's all over with now. Paulino is free. Won't you join us in a glass of wine, Mr... De Navarre, Francisco. De Navarre. That's lovely. It has been a long, hard ride, and if it would not be too much trouble. I'll get the glass. Just for yourself, madame. Just for yourself. Shure, Osakariari, to your help. Um, I, I think I'd like to watch you first. Shure Osegariari. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> 